Hello, good morning, it's Adil Fazal here, the market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the FTSE 100 uh, for the uh, 26th of uh, November, Thursday, 2015. Okay, let's see exactly um, uh, what's causing this, or uh, well, let's try and uh, dissect uh, the reason as to why the FTSE obviously is quite stellar this morning. Quite an impressive uh, move higher, even though we had the Shanghai lower overnight, we had the Hang Seng certainly weaker as well. Uh, the Nikkei was up by uh, 1%, oh, sure, not sure, oh, apologies, it up by 0.5%, or half of a percentage. And uh, given the fact that um, the US market certainly did uh, post some stellar gains uh, towards the end, although they did uh, come off towards the close, uh, they uh, certainly post the uh, GDP data. The fact that um, commodities obviously were still um, failing to propel or move higher, even with the geopolitical tension, and that certainly was uh, keeping the FTSE 100 under uh, severe pressure to a large extent, given the fact that we had the uh, yesterday's video claiming that the 6350, 6360 was the Great Wall of China. Now, whether or not the FTSE can actually sustain its move higher, we'll certainly soon discuss. Okay, now, uh, this morning, again, we'll go in terms of chronological order. We had the Shanghai lower and the Hang Seng low, so that certainly isn't a good sign in terms of the FTSE 100, but we had the Nikkei up by half a percentage point. Now we have terrorism concerns, we have geopolitical concerns, although a lot of the uh, Turkish versus Russia rhetoric has been cal has calmed down to a large extent, even though the Russians certainly did mobilize their, um, obviously, uh, uh, anti, um, uh, or should we say, air surface to air missiles to prevent the, uh, the obviously, incident occurring again. Uh, they did actually state this today that um, we uh, are going to uh, uh, prevent ourselves from sanctions, even though there were there was talk of sanctions in the morning in terms of food imports, uh, and they certainly uh, negated that altogether. So it's it's in a conundrum, a real conundrum in terms of the FTSE 100, because you can have commodities moving higher based on geopolitical tension, but will that rally sustain itself on the FTSE? No, that's the problem, you see. It has to be organic strength, organic growth to a large extent. And that's something that we're still trying to uh, dissect. Now, the other factor as well is the fact that uh, we have to have uh, the European markets moving in tandem with the US mar with with the UK markets, and also the uh, S and P 500 moving in tandem with the uh, the actual FTSE 100 as well. Given the fact that the US markets are obviously under severe pressure, given the uh, rate hike uh, is uh, is a certainty in December, that certainly needs to be taken into equation as well. Now, we have had the news with regards to this morning from China. Okay. China's uh, attempt at uh, at clamping down on the speculators again, uh, so certainly clamping down on, on the short sellers. So again, that in and of itself will cause the uh, commodities to move higher. But that hasn't been the case this morning. We've had the uh, likes of copper certainly thrust higher to 212 from the 204 level, but it's coming back to the 208 level. We've had the oil prices rally as high as 42, but then we're coming back down to the 41.6 level. So no real sustained move, even gold. Currently trading at the 1071, no real sustained move higher. Not only that, even the Aussie and the Kiwi have certainly uh, been under uh, severe pressure as well. So it certainly has been uh, interesting and uh, the interpretation thus far. Now, the markets have moved higher more uh, on the fact that uh, we are uh, short squeezing higher on the ECB leak yesterday with regards to QE. Even though the Euro USD is not falling below 1.06 today yet, the European markets are stellar and are certainly moving higher. So you have to take that into equation as well. So there's a lot of variables at play and uh, how do we decipher them and how do we interpret them? That's the key, that's the key question. Okay, now in terms of the, uh, the actual FTSE 100 itself, we did have Mr. Osborne talking about uh, raising growth targets, etc. That was something that he discussed as well. Um, in terms of being bullish for the FTSE, obviously yesterday's budget was obviously being interpreted as being bullish for the FTSE, given the fact that he did a U-turn on tax credits, and that obviously helps the consumption side of the uh, economy. Now, how do we interpret the FTSE thus far? Now, let's try and break this down, and uh, let's see exactly where we are uh, headed. Okay, now the weekly chart is going to be absolutely crucial here. Why? Because we have this 200 MA. The 200 MA is going to be absolutely pivotal in terms of the next potential market move on the FTSE 100. Now, uh, let's just go back to the weekly chart in terms of uh, deciphering this. Now, we've broken out this key diagonal trend line. So, that again, that's quite important. We've broken out this red bearish trend line or red bearish candle that was printed on the 9th of November, the week 9th of November. Okay, so we are breaking out. Now, we are into 200 MA resistance. So, again, certainly that needs to be taken into, into the equation as well. It's whether or not the weekly chart or weekly candle can sustain a move higher. Now, the arguments against the FTSE moving higher, obviously, stronger dollar. 
Okay, we all know with regards to the rate hike, that's obviously weak, weak for bad for commodities. And can commodities sustain a move, this move higher? That's why this move from China this morning in terms of supporting the commodities and obviously banning the short selling or tamping down the short sellers, etc., etc., certainly is interesting given the fact that they are trying to potentially create some sort of hedge for this uh, dollar rally that will obviously dent commodities uh, or force commodities go even lower. So there certainly seems to be put cushioning the blow on commodities. That's what it seems like. That's why I'm reading it. Okay. So again, that's going to be in interesting going forward. Now the weekly candle again, yes, whenever we negate a bearish candle on a weekly chart is very bullish. So given the fact that we have terrorism concerns, geopolitical concerns as well still in the background, the rhetoric is certainly be flying on both sides and obviously you have the equation of uh, America versus uh, Russia, the proxy war there, obviously situation in Syria. It's it's very, it's not something, it's not a, as a trader, uncertainty equals fear, okay, and fear obviously causes the VIX or volatility to spike and that creates a risk off scenario. Also, the other factor as well in terms of the ECB, I mean, are they actually going to do QE, given the fact that you are uh, obviously expecting a rate hike in December? Uh, we had uh, long growth data this morning, that certainly was uh, was better than expectations, the economic data out of Germany better than expectations. So does Germany or will other uh, individuals actually agree to uh, further a weakening on the euro when it's not needed at present? So again, that's that's certainly interesting as well. Uh, now that is got verging on the uh, discussion of European equities, which I'm going to do shortly. But for now, let's stick to the FTSE 100. So we've taken out the Fib 75% resistance. The candle hasn't closed yet. OK, so again, we could get a late session sell off and we could have a reversal and a topping candle very easily but given the fact that obviously we are trying to uh, support metals uh, commodities here it certainly is potentially bullish for the FTSE 100 but it has to be in line with European equities and the strength in European equities as well now we do have this diagonal trend line so you are going to see resistance around the 4 6, 3, 9, 5, 6 400 level uh, FIB 75 percent resistance is very interesting as well whether or not we can sustain that Going to a 60 minute chart, obviously we've taken out the resistance at 6365, the next resistance zone is seen at um, 6395 and like I said you have this diagonal trend line resistance in play. You have the next resistance at 6420, 6440, 6460 and uh, certainly uh, uh, you see we shall uh, see, certainly see some resistance in that zone now. The 10 minute chart on the FTSE 100 itself, you have this rising contracting wedge pattern, any rising contracting wedge pattern is generally considered to be bearish for equities and uh, certainly indicates exhaustion and you are looking at a potential thrust lower potentially retesting the uh, the previous support equals resistance at 6370 initially and then obviously you have uh, previous resistance equals support at 6350 as well so there are the two zones that you are going to be watching out for and you are looking at for potential pullback on the FTSE 100 at this juncture okay now let's just cross reference that in terms of the FTSE itself looking at the uh, volatility index the volatility index is back into its base or back into potential support which obviously is negative for the FTSE 100 you can clearly see here we've got bottoming candles here bottoming candle here bottoming candle here and uh, you do have support in this region at, uh, where we are at present so you are looking at potential support in the volatility index which is obviously bearish for the FTSE 100 the FTSE all share certainly uh, enjoying a stellar move higher and uh, certainly has reversed and uh, the next level of resistance is going to be around the 3500 region so certainly looking good Euro top 100 again approaching the 200 MA we are into horizontal resistance though so you are expecting uh, weakness on the uh, on the FTSE 100 now the Euro, FTSE Europe again you are into the 200 MA on the 60 minute chart let's flick over to the daily and uh, observe here uh, again, uh, you are looking into uh, uh, being into gap fill resistance, as we can see, and you are looking for further weakness. If you do push higher, then you do have resistance above. So, again, the FTSE rally has discounted in a lot of the bullish news, and given the fact that copper and oil are not sustaining the move higher, certainly is circumspect. The FTSE 250 now is again coming into potential resistance on the 60 minute chart. Looking at your daily chart again you are coming into resistance on the daily chart too. So therefore expecting weakness on the uh, FTSE 100 if the FTSE 250 is into resistance too. Now the price of oil itself still languishing even though we've had talk with regards to the Saudis and also with regards to this Chinese uh, attempt at uh, quashing any further commodity sell-off certainly is not working uh, its magic on the uh, price of oil. Okay, so certainly a, a cause for concern uh, going forward in terms of the price of oil itself so again that's not exactly good news for the FTSE 100 itself now the dollar index certainly is poised to potentially move higher 
uh, we are consolidating here we are into gap fill support so you are expecting a potential uh, further thrust higher on the uh, price of the dollar itself okay especially given the fact that the data yesterday with regards to durable goods gdp data prior to that okay only only uh, data that was languishing was the uh, pce deflator index which is the inflation gauge and obviously consumer confidence but the market certainly seemed to be locked into a rate hike and that certainly seems to be the order at present now the aussie usd itself is in has a hns formation as you can see in the 60 minute chart so that's not exactly bullish uh, setup for the FTSE itself either the uh, kiwi has put has made a new high but then obviously given the fact that we had weaker trade data overnight that exactly that isn't exactly bullish and that's certainly sending a point pressure on the kiwi itself okay uh, the oil and gas sector, we've had this thrust higher. We are struggling at this resistance zone where previous support equals resistance. The mining sector is the only concern for me. <clears throat> uh, we have had or we are holding support uh, daily. But given the fact that the Chinese news hasn't created a more more of a significant bounce is, is, a, is a concern to a large extent. Um, it certainly needs to be taken. I mean, given the fact that we've had this uh, news with regards to China, etc. And yet still the mining sector as you can see is languishing at the lows it's not exactly um, a vote of confidence okay although yes yeah, i could well be wrong we could have a one hell of a stellar rally and, and the FTSE itself could be taken to 6500 or 6600 that certainly is the case but at this current juncture it's not exactly looking uh, very uh, prosperous shall we say okay now i think that's a uh, an insight uh, in terms of the um, you've got the banking sector as well coming into resistance the retail sector coming uh, certainly has been pretty weak even though we've got talk with regards to black friday etc etc certainly is not uh, obviously uh, working its magic on the index at present so again uh, again i have to resort back to the s p 500 from my perspective now 2100 is your gap fill resistance okay on the s p 500 the s p is currently trading at 2100 okay so therefore based on that uh, level of resistance one would expect the FTSE 100 to come into resistance as well okay if the S&P takes out 2100 then you are looking at 2110 2120 and yes the FTSE 100 will certainly move with it okay again going back to the daily chart or 10 minute chart you have a rising contracting wedge in the 10 minutes so again that's a bearish pattern 60 minute chart you have resistance in this zone here too okay so you have uh, resistance here uh, anywhere in the region of 6380 to 6395 to 6400 so again that's going to be interesting how the market tackles them okay 10 minute chart itself i've already shown you going back to your daily chart you've taken out the fib 75 percent but you do have the diagonal trend line resistance at 6400 or 6395 uh, again that is going to be a challenge for the FTSE itself i'll do my european market analysis video and you'll understand why um, I would be very cautious with regards to taking uh, any further long positions at this juncture. Yes, you do have the argument of light volume or causing a float higher. Yes, that certainly is the case, but my trading is based on uh, what I see, not what's happened in the past or what's expected based on light volume. So, again, I am looking for resistance at this 6395, 6400 level. And uh, with regards to European indices, they are already into resistance, given the fact that you have geopolitical concerns going into the weekend, and that's not exactly bullish news. Also, given the fact that Euro USD is above 1.06, and that certainly is not uh, a, a vote of confidence for further QE. Okay, that's a uh, summary. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.